All right, guys, it's time for the review of Oxygen OS for the Mi 11X, also known as Poco F3. Now, I installed this ROM about a week back. Since then, I've been using it because in previous reviews, I reviewed it after using it for a day or two. And a lot of people did tell me that you should actually use this ROM for three to four days or longer than that, especially the ones which are ports and see how it performs in the long run. So this is a complete review of Oxygen OS's latest port which is based on OnePlus Nord. This is of course Android 11 we are talking about. So there will be some differences going back. And before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to PhoneOps. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Now, first things first, let's see what do we have here. We have Oxygen OS port 11 extended edition, Android 11, and this was updated on the 6th of September 2022. So, relatively a new port. Now, if we do talk about the change log over here, there are quite a lot of things that have been changed. So, let's quickly go ahead and have a look at that. All right. So, the latest change log says side mounted fingerprint enrolling. That's great. Volume panel on the right, finally enabled 90 hertz mode, enabled full screen display switching support for all third party apps. If it does not work, all apps don't report a bug to me. Added unlimited Google Photos storage. So these are the changes that have been made recently. The last update was on the 10th of August. So this ROM per se or this port per se gets updated once every month, which is a good thing. The developer is keeping it straight and simple. And the installation process is pretty straightforward. Let me know in the comment section if you want, I'll make an installation video as well. But notes do mention over here, clean flash is a must. Changing kernel might result in boot loop or disabling double tap to wake test on your own. SE Linux is permissive. Build is decrypted by default. Don't report bugs if you use any thermal mods or GPU mods or other mods. All right. So that's everything that you have about this particular ROM as far as the developer is concerned. But what did I observe, right? Now, as you can see over here, this is running in 120 hertz mode and initially this was really, really smooth. It's a little ironic that I'm starting with the only con, probably one of the very few cons that I saw about this port, but you need to know, right? So yeah, I find it a little less smooth, nothing annoying, nothing that, you know, would be a deal breaker, but it doesn't really feel like 120 at this point. It feels more like 90. And other fact is also that I'm using the Pixel 6 as my primary device. And this is way smoother than anything that I've used over the years. So it's, it's smoother than what my GT2 Pro used to be at 120 Hertz than my Xiaomi 10T used to be at 144 or even the iPhone at 60 Hertz or so. So anyways, pixel discussion for another day. Apart from it being slightly less smooth, I've not experienced any major issues. Wi-Fi does stop working sometimes, but a simple reboot fixes the issue. Now let's talk about the good deal. Why you should install this ROM? What is the battery backup like? And what is the gaming like? And what are the features that I enabled? Now, the first thing that I liked about this particular ROM is it comes with OnePlus applications. That means OnePlus dialer, OnePlus messaging, you do get OnePlus gallery. Another neat addition here is the ANX camera. You have a full blown MIUI camera. All the features are working, including if you go to video, you will see that you do have 4K 30 FPS as well. So that's another neat addition. These two things actually make the ROM complete, whatever custom ROM you're talking about. Now, another important aspect over here is use of banking applications, because let's face it, if you're going to use a device as a daily driver, you will in all probability be using banking applications. And as you can see, device is certified and safety net is passing as well. So you will have no issues whatsoever using banking applications on this custom ROM. Also, Widewind L1 is present. So consuming content on this beautiful E4 AMOLED display will not be a problem. Now, overall, the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that this is a complete OnePlus experience. The charging animation from Cyberpunk is there. To the left, you do have Google Feed, which works smooth as butter. It is slightly less smoother than AOSP ROM, but then come on. Any custom skin by a manufacturer is not as smooth as AOSP. But overall, using this ROM as a daily, you will not have any major problems. I've not, you know, encountered any bugs or random reboots and stuff like that, apart from the Wi-Fi thing that I mentioned. Now, let's quickly go to settings over here. 
let's go to pout phone and as you can see it does say 6128 it's a snapdragon 870 powered poco f3 which is a good thing everything is mentioned in detail over here if you do go to the android version you still get the perf kernel and uh, perf kernel has been performing great for me i've not really had any major problems per se majority of the oneplus features like you know the gaming mode over here is present and as you can see, it works absolutely fine. I've not had any major issues. The only issue I might have had though, the game turbo or the game launcher of OnePlus sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't work even after, you know, adding it. As you can see, the game mode here is not working. So that's a hit and a miss. But apart from that, gaming on this device with this particular ROM has been excellent. You know, what do you expect from a Mi 11X? 60 FPS gaming is definitely good. You don't really get 90 FPS support. The games that I've tried are Call of Duty Mobile and Apex Legends. Again, you know, if you want me to make a detailed gaming review of Apex Legends and Call of Duty Mobile, let me know in the comment section. If I have enough requests, I will definitely go ahead and make that video. Now, the charging speeds on this particular ROM are pretty normal. One small issue that I encountered was Accu battery for some reason doesn't report stats at all. I have tried giving it all the permissions and everything, but as you can see, I mean, it, it just won't hold up the information. Probably it gets killed in the background. I tried keeping it in memory as well, but still it fails to report the numbers. Anyways, let's go to settings over here. And as you can see, this is a complete OnePlus operating system with all the features that you could expect. Now, there is also something called as OnePlus Tools, which allows you to make changes to the number of quick setting styles that you can have. The window animation scale can be increased or decreased and you can enable or disable the call, re call recorder and you can enable or disable the monochrome mode as well. So those are the OnePlus tools over here and you can actually go ahead and calibrate the screen yourself from J OnePlus tool. So that's a neat addition. Apps to display in full screen, Refresh rate can be set to 60, 90 or 120. Screen calibration does work in real time and that is a good thing. So, you know, as I said earlier, this port has been under development for a very, very long time and the developer is doing an excellent job. You do have things like dark mode, reading mode, ambient display, always on display. All these things are present and they work absolutely fine. I've not had any major issues with the always on display as well as well as the fingerprint scanner is working absolutely fine for me. Now, as far as call connectivity is concerned, using mobile data or calling, it's absolutely fine. I've not had any issues with day-to-day -day calling and receiving text messages and stuff like that. Let's dive into settings once again. We were in display and over here, you do have status bar customization. You have to disable album art. You do have an option over here and screen saver. Now, apart from this, if you go to sound and vibration, you do get the MI sound enhancer and clear speaker, which is now available in almost all the custom ROMs. And in security and lock screen, you do get fingerprint. Unfortunately, I don't see face unlock available or working over here. And then if you go to battery, you do see that you have thermal profile, which I've added to you know the games or the benchmarks that I'm running with this particular ROM and it has been completely fine. So you do get the battery temperature over here. And if you talk about view battery usage, it works fine. So I don't know what IQ battery is having issues with. Now under utilities, you do have parallel apps, you do have app locker and all those things. These things are available and work absolutely okay. Under system, you do have your standard stuff over here as well. So as far as OxygenOS ROM is concerned, all the standard features of OxygenOS are available and they're working absolutely fine. So no complaints there. And uh, using it as a daily driver on a personal device, no problems whatsoever. But what about the performance you are? Because I did tell you that the battery charging speeds are pretty normal for 33 watts and the performance is pretty decent as well because if you go to enter to benchmark over here you will notice that it did score 687,274 the temperature just increased by 5.8 degrees celsius remember on some roms the mi 11x can go up to 7 to 7.5 degrees and we just lost about three percent battery which is a good thing now apart from this if we go to gallery we will be able to see the thermal test as well now, as you can see, the CPU did throttle to 93% of its max performance and the average score was 232, 162 GIPS, the maximum being 241, 333. Now, this is a 15 minute test that we are talking about. So that's a pretty good result. And even if you go to peak bench over here, 
you will notice that uh, the single core and multi core score is almost on par with the stock rom which in my opinion is a pretty good thing 959 single core is very close to the stock rom 3081 multi core is about 2 to 300 points less than the stock rom but all in all in my opinion it is doing a great job this is a port which is regularly being developed and bugs are being fixed every single month so if you want to try something different you can definitely go ahead and give it a shot i did try playing apex legends on it for one match that is you know a ranked match my experience was pretty rock solid no extra heating just what the 870 does best and uh, yeah it was pretty good so all in all, a splendid update by the developer for this Oxygen OS port for the Mi 11X. The same video will be available in Hindi on PhoneOps Hindi. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.